Welcome to the Simple Doesn't Mean Easy podcast. We are here weekly working at simplifying things in our lives one day at a time, one step at a time, and together we can do this. I'm your host, Michelle Visser, and today is episode 16 in season five, all about simple steps towards improving our health. And today our guest is someone I love to follow on Instagram And she's going to help us think about addressing our family's health needs a little more naturally and why that might be something we want to do. She's also going to give us really hands-on practical ways to do so. So I think you're going to like this episode. Before I bring Elizabeth Parsons on, two quick things. I want to remind you, we have a fun giveaway Every book from every author that is in this season is available to the winner of the giveaway. All you have to do to add this amazing collection to your library is to go ahead and leave a review over on Apple Podcasts and one winner will be chosen at the end of this season. If you don't know how to leave a review, it's really super simple. If you go to solelyrested.com slash podcast, I break down exactly what you need to do with the links included right there for you. It will literally take one minute of your time and I would love to hear from you. Also, I wanted to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Redmond Real Salt. And you know, I learned recently something that I think is super cool. You all know here on this season, whenever possible, I am bringing in tips or points that have to do with menopause because a lot of you were interested in that as a potential topic. I learned just recently that salt actually causes our intestines to absorb more of the calcium that's in our diet because sometimes we are eating the calcium or drinking it, but our body isn't always necessarily absorbing it. If you have a healthy amount of salt in your diet, it is going to absorb more of that calcium, which of course in our menopause years helps so much with avoiding any fears of osteoporosis. So if you're menopause age like me, it's super good to know, add on a little bit more salt once in a while, but On top of that, why not, if you can, add some extra trace minerals that are so beneficial? Because if we eat sea salt the way it was made with nothing added, nothing taken out, it is so good for us. This is something that the Redmond brothers discovered. They actually discovered an unrefined sea salt mine in an ancient seabed area under the ground in Utah back in the 1950s. And the two brothers, Lamar and Milo, decided to start a company all about real salt, to mine it the way it was made in nature and to sell it the way it was made, not taking out any of those trace minerals and trying to sell them as different products to make maybe more money on the side, but instead offering the consumer the real deal, the way that nature intended it, because they had the conviction back in the 50s when they started the company that nature had it right. And they were going to stick with the way it was intended. So give Redmond salt a try. I think you will love it. Once I tried it, I never went back. It's been over five years. I have never purchased a different salt because there's no need to. They have a lot of different options of seasonings, great varieties of salts. I love every single thing I have tried from their company. And I love it that there are zero, and I am talking zero, artificial additives zero unhealthy pollutants because it's mined from an ancient seabed underground, but there are over 60 trace minerals. So go check out solelyrested.com slash salt, because there I give you my coupon code to save 15% off your entire order. I give you links to Redmond, but I also give you my top three favorite items. If you're not sure where to start and you want to introduce yourself to Redmond Salt, go check out my three favorite products that I almost always put in my cart whenever I am ordering from Redmond and let me know what you think. Solelyrested.com slash salt. So now let's bring on Elizabeth. I am excited today to have Elizabeth Parsons on. Elizabeth is probably best known over on Instagram as Purely Parsons. In fact, some people might not even know you by your first name. I don't know. (laughs) 
I know people. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that does happen. <laughs> sometimes people call me solely rested. They're like, and I'm like, I do have a name, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Elizabeth is a wife and a mom of five. And I know you worked as a pediatric nurse for close to a decade, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then you came home full time. So now you're a voice for the health and wellness space, but you're really passionate about empowering followers of yours, individuals to really take charge of their health and the health of their families and to do so with a natural bent instead of the more medical field that you came out of, if I'm getting this right. Is that how you would describe yourself? Yeah, yeah. I just, I love encouraging people to kind of just, you know, not just go along with the status quo and, you know, question why they may be doing something. Um, and it's, it's kind of stemmed from kind of my journey and, you know, my family's journey and things that I've learned along the way that I love to share with people that have worked for us. And, um, you know, we're not anti-medicine or anti-Western medicine. Um, like, if, you know, if I'm if I'm in a car wreck and my arm is, you know, cut off or like, take me to the hospital. Absolutely. Please. But I just think that there's, you know, there's things as a mom that I have learned that it doesn't always have to be the jump to immediately going to that Western model. And there's, you know, nat more natural approaches that don't have as harsh of side effects that actually work. So I love yes. sharing that. Yes. And I'm so thankful that we live in the time that we do, that we truly can take advantage of both sides that you're talking about. It's mm -hmm. such a blessing. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, my husband and I just, I know we're behind the times, but we just started watching is it called? I don't even know the name. 1883, I think is the series. I have no idea. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> me um, too. I don't, e I don't even know what platform it's on. So I'm just going to tell you that it, they're in a wagon train and the things that are happening to them medically, I'm just going, mm. I never even thought about the kind of medical issues they would have had traveling in a wagon train in the 1800s. So I'm very thankful that, that I don't have to yes. do that. So I'm with you. Well, okay, and also so for like modern, modern advances in, you know, like water and roadways and just, you know, hygiene and, and things yes, like that. Absolutely. So, you know, that, that, that played a huge role in a lot of things that went wrong <laughs> as yeah. well. So for sure, yeah. for sure. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. Like, was there a main driving force that caused this kind of a change of perspective for you to, to want um, to go more natural? So I think it was just kind of more gradual. I mean, like you said, I was a nurse, um, a pediatric nurse, actually. Um, I graduated in 2011 and was just like a typical, like, you know, nurse. And um, then my husband started to have some health issues and he started doing a bunch of research on that. And then kind of around the same time, I got pregnant with my first child. And I just feel like when you become a mother, it is, there's just something in you that you just become a researcher because it's not just you, it's this whole nother being that you are yes. entrusted to care for. And um, I think that they're, I mean, our first kids, bless their hearts, they're, they're kind of guinea pigs, right? And I was just gonna say that. <laughs> there were there were things that we did with her and even like in the moment we didn't know because we just do the best that we can with sure. what we have and with what we know and uh, when you know better you do better and we just didn't know better and even so like back then it didn't seem odd or it didn't seem weird the way that she was acting or how sick she was but looking back on you know footage and video and pictures she was sick a lot and mm. we were kind of you know it, it, we were kind of taking a more just like you know path that most people take um as far as like medical decisions are concerned and even just like treating things it wasn't it wasn't like a a moment that just like clicked and i was like okay no more like we're sure. i'm doing everything natural yeah. i don't think that that is how it happens for most people but it was kind of those two things colliding where you know my husband was dealing with his stuff and trying to figure all of that out and then i had our baby and i didn't want to have to constantly be giving her medications um and you know there's there's effects that happens there's there's always a side effect from a pharmaceutical and that is just it's not to be offensive it's just fact there's yeah. there is a there's always a side effect and so I think once I started 
treating things more naturally and just doing research. Like if something would come up, like say an ear infection, and I was like, I don't necessarily want to give her an antibiotic because I know how that affected her the last time. Um, you know, we dealt with like gut issues for so many <laughs> weeks mm, after that. Yeah. I don't really want to do that again. Let's see if there's a way to treat this better or more naturally at home that's not so harsh. And so I would just literally like get on Google and like yeah. natural remedies for X, Y, Z. And that's how I learned a lot of the things that I've tried over the years. Um, you know, it wasn't my medical background necessarily that that helped me to, you know, I might understand more of the clinical terms and the like pathophysiology of things. But right. as far as like knowing what to use to treat things naturally, that was all just like my own research. And but then interesting. I was it. actually going to ask you if it almost might have hindered you from diving too deeply or too quickly into natural ideas because of your medical background. I mean, you were trained a different way, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was. And, and I've seen both sides, you know, I've seen, um, I've seen the effects of kiddos that I would take care of in the hospital. And, um, and I just, you just, you just want differently for your child when you, when you've seen the other side. And gotcha. I think that in some ways make me more hesitant to like, just even the, even the idea of like, well checks was so hard for me to like, let go because I'm, I'm sure. like, well, it's a well check and it's right. like, but they coincide exactly with the vaccine schedule. And like, my husband was like, why are, why are we taking her to somewhere where p sick people go? Like, she's not getting her back. Like she's not getting a vaccine. Like why, like, why are we taking her yeah. there? We can weigh her, we, you know, and, and these like very scheduled, especially frequent, even that was so hard for, I had to do so much unlearning for sure. Um, yeah. so, okay. I'm going to interrupt you though, because yeah. I, I'm in a generation a little beyond you and I never questioned the well visits. I did them all, you know, yeah. I mean, never questioned. It's been something, a pretty new idea the past few years to me, even after it's too late to matter. Cause my kids are all adults now. Um, when, so do you, if you decide to skip the well checks, do you literally just go when you really feel you need medical intervention, just when the kid is sick? That's it. Okay. So a disclaimer on that is that I'm not telling anybody what to do. <laughs> you have to okay. figure out, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you have to figure out what is best for your family. Um, right. for us, like we are rarely sick. Um, you know, as soon as we started opting out of the, the normal yeah. things, it's like our, our second child, a completely different ball game. And it was like, there wasn't really a need. And so, yeah, you know, I think that you have to figure out what is, what makes you feel most comfortable as a mom. You know, I have a medical background, so I can maybe see things that other people don't as far as right. like, you know, well, things are concerned, but at the same time, like anybody can get a stethoscope, you know, like anybody can mm -hmm. get an otoscope and be able to like look in somebody's ears. It's, you know, there's a, there's kind of a, this like attitude towards moms who do as just being like Google moms, but it's like, we live in 2023, like, right. You can look things up and learn so much on the internet. And yes, yes there's things that you have to sift through and you have to figure out, okay, is this actually true versus, you know, things that, that actually help, but like, it's totally, it's totally doable to be empowered just through like research on the internet. And so for us, yeah, I mean, we, we take a more natural approach in terms of the care providers that we seek. You know, if we, like I do chiropractic regularly, um, if you know, we need a doctor, it's usually like more of a family medicine provider or a naturopath. Um, it's like, if you want to opt out of a lot of the normal childhood things, like why are you taking your child to somewhere right. who specializes in, specializes in those. So I always tell people, you know, if you want just the peace of mind, like to take your kiddo every year for a well check, that's, that's totally understandable. Just like find a family doctor, you know, cause they're usually more likely to be a little bit less um, pushy. Great point. And it's just a more relaxing environment. I feel like too, at least for us, our family doctor is just so chill, you know, and I, I don't know, taking my kids to the pediatrician is always very stressful. And like you said, with there's the sick room and there's the kids crying mm -hmm. and then you hear the kids crying because they're getting their shots in the next room. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember sitting in the pediatrician's office with Sayla, my first born, uh, you know, postpartum visit or like the, I don't know, they, they make you take them at like 24 hours or something ridiculous right. like that. And I, this is my first baby. I'm like postpartum hormones. I remember sitting in that waiting room just like crying because it was so stressful to get yeah. out of the house. Like she was, you know, I was yes. trying, my milk hadn't come in. Like I'm trying to yes. nurse and it was You're just exhausted. Like, it was so stressful. And I'm just like, why, like, why am I doing this? Yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, there's moments like that, that kind of like add up over time that you start to be like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> this is so silly. Um, why am I stressing myself out over this? And um, yeah, so I think for me, it was kind of a culmination of not just like one moment, but kind of like a lot of those little moments. Yeah. Do you have people that, you know, I mean, obviously your whole platform is pretty much about natural remedies. Do you have people often just asking, you know, why, what, what's wrong with traditional medicine? And maybe you kind of answered this already, but do you, do you have like a, a good reason, a few sentences you give us an elevator pitch of why natural remedies? Like, why would you not want to try something that's a little less um, invasive and is going to have less side effects, you can always go up the rail. You know, you can always go to the next level of care if needed. And that um, using things that I have in my home, I've been successful and I haven't really needed to. I mean, praise the Lord. Like, you know, the Lord is is sovereign over my children's lives and their health, but like I haven't needed to really, you know, use modern medicine too many times in my parenting journey my daughter will be 10 in october and there's been like less than a handful of times that we've needed to like go to the er or you know seek further care for them so yeah why not yeah. <laughs> why not try it if they're if your child can be less affected um by a pharmacy by a, a a natural remedy than they would be by a pharmaceutical why wouldn't yeah. you want to try it yeah. And sometimes a natural remedy is going to have zero effects, zero side effects. You exactly. Know? Exactly. Not always, I should say not always, but often. Um, right. So, and not only is God sovereign, like you just said, but also he's given us these natural remedies and sometimes exactly. he places yeah. them in nature right beside yeah. the thing that causes the problem. Like you might find um, jewelweed right beside poison ivy. You know, I mean, God mm. is genius about how he provides exactly <laughs> what we need. Of course he is. Right. So yes. why not start with what he gave us, you know? And of course you yeah. could argue, well, he also gave us the wonderful brains to create modern science. And I would agree with that too, sure. but you know, yeah. Sure. So I love the way you described it. Okay. I, so what I think I that, sorry, I was just going to no. say, I think that people, if you start to research the pharmaceutical industry and see where it's all about money right Absolutely. and so um you know there's there's gifted doctors and there's you know and we need good doctors in the world but also there's a lot of evil behind um the pharma and their intentions and that's a rabbit hole <laughs> for sure oh yeah a big <laughs> one but i mean so true and i'm glad you brought it up because yeah. it's it's so true money is always yeah. um the root behind so many medical things that are suggested yeah. Um, so if I want to do as much natural remedies as I can with my family, what are some of the core things that you would say I need to have in my medicine cabinet? What are some of the things you put together that you're sure you always have on hand? Um, well, so first of all, I would say a huge part of this is being prepared of being able to treat my family and my children naturally and not have to run out at three o'clock in the morning to the grocery store, or the, the drug store is, is being prepared. And so yeah. having these things on hand when my son wakes up and he's coughing and he can't sleep, um, having these things beforehand, what do we say? Be prepared so you don't have to be panicked because when you're panicked and you're operating in a place of fear, you don't make the best decisions usually, especially and as so a mom, I, because we panic, especially think, as a mom when it's our child, you know, yeah. Out ourselves. Um, there was a, a very pivotal moment in my journey was when my husband was very sick. And um, this was like early on in his 
I'll answer your question, but <laughs> no, that's fine. No, go um, ahead. This is <laughs> this is very early on in in our whole journey. We hadn't even had our daughter yet, but he was very sick and ended up having to go to the hospital, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. And I remember being in the um, ad admitting um, the ER part where they were doing triage, and um, the nurse was like asking me questions, and I had I had mentioned I gave and she like jumped down my throat she was like you're a nurse you should know that he shouldn't have anything to drink right now like he needs to be not drinking or eating in case he has to go to surgery yeah yeah, yeah. and she just mm. like jumped on me mm. and I was just like in shock that she was so um harsh like that but when I sat and thought about it because I, I, I felt guilty I was yes I should have known but then when I sat afterwards and thought about it I'm like no, because when you're in a state of shock and you're the, the patient or the patient's family, it's a completely different mindset. And a lot of like knowledge kind of evaporates. And um, you well, know, and also you're wearing the hat of wife in that situation, not right. nurse, you know? Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So in, yeah. in the role of wife or caretaker or mom, it's, it's it's different in the moment so um being prepared is a huge part of having a natural medicine cabinet but some things that i have on hand that i use all the time would be things like calendula salve i use that it is so multi-purpose i use it for um, cuts and scrapes and rashes um and it's just it's super calming and it is so multi-purposeful so Calendula mm -hmm. salve is a great one. Um, yeah. I use coconut oil to dilute a lot of things um, like oils. Um, yeah. So when I'm using oils, that's another one that I use a lot. I reach for my essential oils um, almost on a daily basis. And so yeah. I do have coconut oil, but coconut oil is also really great for um, rashes and um, any type of like if you've got like a yeast infection or um, if you've got a tooth issue, you can do like oil pulling with yeah. um, coconut oil. So coconut oil is super, super diverse and multi-purposeful. I like having things that I can use for Agree. a bunch of different things. Yeah. Yes. Um, homeopathy is something that I use on a regular basis um, and I love it because it has no side effects and yeah. you really can't go wrong um, with homeopathy. Sure. It's, it's, a, it's a great thing to have have um things like apple cider vinegar i love using that um with like bentonite clay that is another multi-purpose thing that i have in my medicine cabinet so i will mix those two together to make a paste um for like a rash or a bee sting um, or a bug bite anything like that um and then i, I didn't know that bentonite. about bentonite clay i actually yeah. had a guest on from redmond's ag who was talking oh. about their clay and we didn't yeah. get into all the uses. So I love this. Yeah. Tell me what else do you do with the clay? Yeah. So I use it, um, in baths. So like a detox bath, if your kiddo is fighting something, um, hmm. it's, it's really great. Um, so for instead of Epsom baths. salt, you put in some, no, I do clay? both. I do both. Okay. So, um, Epsom salt, the bentonite clay helps, um, balance like the pH of the skin. It's really great. It's really soothing for any like skin issues. So hmm. like if we were dealing with like, I, my kids have never had eczema, but that is something that I would put in the bath that they did to be very, very soothing anymore. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so in the bath is a really great option as well, but mainly um, for like making pastes for um, okay. topical application. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, just, just a few things. There's, there's a lot in my medicine cabinet, but it's been a, a very slow growth over the years. Yeah. And then you were just giving me the general. So like, if you're just starting off wanting to do more natural things, those are the things you would start with. Yeah. Those are some of okay. them. Elderberry syrup is like another oh, thing yeah. that that's where I started. I always had elderberries in my freezer, dried elderberries in my freezer. Yes. And whenever my kiddos got started to get sick, I would make elderberry syrup, which is why I started my elderberry syrup business. Um, that's kind of like how it was born because I used it all the time. Um, so that was probably like the first thing that I added to my medicine cabinet. And then it just kind of, as you learn. So love it. A few episodes ago, I had on an expert about that. And we talked about how to even forge for elderberries and all kinds oh, of good stuff. So, and so elder jealous. flowers are great too. They're very yeah. useful as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about a few very specific things. Maybe okay. you can give us some insight. If a mom is sure. listening and they have a kid battling one of these couple things, what would you do? So what about like 
coughs and respiratory issues. Mm -hmm. If a kid's up at night coughing, what do you do to handle that naturally? Yeah, I love that you said if the kid is up at night because I don't treat coughs during the day. Um, oh. Coughing is the body's way of getting out whatever it needs to get out. So I don't tend to treat coughs during the day unless they're hmm. just like absolutely miserable. Yeah. Um, and it's like really affecting like, you know, their, their being able to function, but typically that's not how it is. But a cough, yeah. even, even a cough, your body is trying to expel whatever that is from the lungs. Um, so, but on the other hand, sleep is imperative for healing. And so yes. I do treat coughs at night because they tend to keep a child up. Um, so I love doing like a warm chamomile tea with honey, uh, just like a spoonful of honey is um, great for a cough and that uh, warm tea will help to soothe um, the airways and um, that that tends to really, really kind of just relax them and really help. Um, I also like doing a steam shower. So I will close the bathroom doors, turn the shower on as high as it'll go or as hot as it'll go and close the shower door or, you know, the curtain, whatever. You're just trying to make like an enclosed room, kind of like a right. sauna. So almost. the kid's not going in the hot water. You're just, no, the <laughs> don't put okay. the kid in the shower <laughs> and then wait about 10 minutes and then go back in, you know, close the doors and then go back in with your child and just sit on the floor of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And it's just all that steam will help to kind of like really uh, relax yeah. um, the airway. And you can even do like a wet, washcloth with a few drops of essential oil to help um with that as well i love doing like eucalyptus um and i love then, it now where do you put the washcloth to get the um full so i put it in the shower not under the direct uh the direct stream of water but kind uh -huh. of like just outside of it so that it, it's kind of like getting huh. it's like a passive okay. diffusion Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I also do diffuse oils like by their bedside if they have a cough um, and I'll dilute them with coconut oil and rub them on their chest and on their feet. Um, and then as far as, you know, the supplements that I give them, I do like having things on hand that are more natural. Um, so boron makes a chestal cough syrup that's just cleaner than like your typical well, that's good cough syrup that you're going to okay. find at the store. Um, and then another company makes um, one called Cough Be Gone, and that's from Earthly Wellness. Um, and that's another one that I really like to use. So I kind of have both of those on hand. And um, Wellaments makes one too um, that's, that we use on a regular basis. So I kind of switch, switch those out depending on which one I have in my cabinet. Um, and those are super helpful as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah. What about if a kid has a fever. Is that something that you would ever treat? Or do you think a fever should see its way through the child system? Um, sure. Yeah, I would, I would treat a fever if I needed to. I, I find that um, the way that our society looks at fevers, it's um, from a, a place of fear and um, fevers are really misunderstood. They're not the bad guy. Um, mm -hmm. And I've always told parents don't treat the number on the thermometer treat the child um because i you know i've had a kid with a fever of 104 who is running around and totally fine and then i've had a kid who's like 101 who may be miserable and so yeah. you really want to look at the child not the temperature i rarely even get my thermometer out um hmm. to check the temperature um just unless i sometimes i'm just like curious you know i just want to know like okay, right how right. high did it get you know but um, as far as like needing to treat it, it's just not necessary um, mm -hmm. because fevers are our body's natural way to rid whatever it is. And yeah. it's, it's a brilliant design. And so when we are, you know, in the hospital, you would see a kid, you, you know, you have to come in as a nurse and take vitals. And if a kid gets like, I think it's a uh, hundred, 100.4 100. is the medical definition of a fever. So if a kid mm -hmm gets to 100.4, we're supposed to give medicines, but I would even see parents, I would take it and it would be like 99 and they're like, oh, can you get them some Tylenol? And it's like, mm. you know, we just have this mindset, but when we're reducing fevers, we are hindering the body's ability because think about it when you're trying to, um, when you're trying to get rid of a pathogen, what do you do? You heat it up. And yeah. so when we're doing, when we're, you know, suppressing the body to do that, then we're just kind of like interfering. The body's like, why are you 
Why are yeah. you doing this? I'm I was try- busy I'm working to- here. What are you yeah. doing? Stop I was work. working yeah. here. And I know that a lot of parents are scared of febrile seizures mm. um, because whether their child has had one before or, or whatnot, there's a lot of research actually on febrile seizures. You know, they're actually not super dangerous. Um, and I know there's always the outliers and people are going to say, well, my child, this, that. But um, something that maybe people don't know is febrile seizures actually happen oftentimes because of the rapid spike in temperature. So if you think about it, we're decreasing the temperature and then the body's like, nope, I'm going back up because this is what I'm designed to do. And so we're like, we're almost like causing that to happen if we're just constantly pumping with Tylenol and Motrin. So I tend to... um, support the body, um, not decrease the fever intentionally, but just support that child or me or my husband or whatever it is um, through, you know, just like rest. Like my kids, when they have fevers, like they will lay and rest and sleep. Yeah. And it's like the body knows what it's doing. Um, a, lo- a lot of times they're not hungry, you know, and that's that's totally normal. So mainly it's just focusing on hydration through, you know, bone broth and, you um, you know, coconut, um, coconut water and things that have electrolytes in them and yes. helping to just replenish those, you know, tepid baths or like cool rags. Um, you can do peppermint oil on the spine. That's very, very cooling. I like hmm. to do that down the spine and then I'll put like a cold rag, like just nice. wipe a cold rag. Um, way so better. Just- than like the 1970s mom that put the vapor rub all over the chest, that nasty <laughs> I can just, stuff. <laughs> I can just like feel the stickiness. I was Ugh, one of those the children. Smell, like it hurts your nose, the smell, yes. but the essential oils would be so relaxing. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love so that. just comfort, just comforting them and supporting their yeah. bodies to do what their bodies were designed to do. Absolutely. I love that you pointed out that like the body knows it needs rest. And instead of waking them up, taking the temperature every hour, waking them up every couple hours to give them more Tylenol or Avil or whatever it is, let them rest. It's so, so beneficial. I mean, we had an expert on just last episode, a sleep expert talking about how much our body needs the rest. And he, of course, he was not a believer. So he referred to it as evolutionary process, but he even mentioned that moms with young children, it's amazing how the brain has adapted Um, I would say, you know, how God designed the brain, of course, that the mom, she's not getting rest. The child's up sick or she has the newborn and her brain is able to go into a deep sound sleep very quickly when her body needs that rest. And I think that's fascinating. And God designed the body. Of course, he designed it so it can, in most cases, get the rest that it needs. So stop interrupting, mom. Let the kids sleep. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You will not find me waking my child up when they are sick unless, you know, it's an emergent. But absolutely. no, just let yeah. them sleep. Just let them sleep. I love it. Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me. And I really enjoyed this. I wish I had known you and Natural Remedies two decades ago, you know, because I would have done my motherhood a little differently, but it's still really good for me now, even, you know, for where I am in my journey to hear all this stuff. So I love it. Thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. Even though we had the, we had a few (laughs) technical technical issues, but we made it. (laughs) So just remind me to remind everybody listening, I should say where they can find you because you are a wealth of knowledge and you are very encouraging to so many. So what's the best place for people to find you? Yeah, sure. So I am mainly on Instagram at Purely Parsons. Um, there's a bunch of highlights there where I've tried to like separate out different ailments. Um, I have a remedies highlight where I've just got like a bunch of posts that I've done on yes. different ailments. Um, so mainly on, on on Instagram. And then we also have a website, purelyparsons.com, where I've got a blog and I also have a shop there where we sell various, various uh, like wellness products. So I love it. Everybody, please go check out Elizabeth. She is just a wealth of knowledge. And like I said, so encouraging. Thanks again, Elizabeth. Thank you, Michelle. So you might not believe it, but Elizabeth and I had so many technical hurdles in recording this episode, (laughs) but I have an amazing podcast editor and I'm pretty sure you didn't even notice it. At least I hope so. But Elizabeth was a trooper between her and I, we went back and forth with problems. We were both having problems. I've never had an episode recording that was quite so difficult. So I don't know, maybe there was some extra 
behind the scenes force that didn't want this episode to happen for whatever reason. But I'm so thankful we got through it and Elizabeth was able to share so many encouraging, simple little tips of ways we can truly look at our family's health from a more natural viewpoint with more natural options. I hope it was encouraging to you and thanks for listening. Love to hear your thoughts about the podcast. Go leave a review, solelyrested.com slash podcast for the details. Enter that giveaway to up your library with some amazing books to help you on your journey towards living a more healthy lifestyle. And I hope you enjoyed hanging out with Elizabeth and I. Thanks for listening. And remember, it is easy to forget how blessed we are to live this life. So enjoy the simple everyday efforts. It's not easy, but it is a very good life.